Welcome. And we'll start sitting comfortably. <clears throat> Whatever that is for you, it's fine. Long, you might sit cross legged or whatever is comfortable. So you can sit comfortably with your and relax everything with your long spine. Let's bring our hands together and we'll just place this pr prayer pose position with your thumb knuckles just gently pressing into the very gently pressing into the center of your sternum. Right? And we'll just breathe like this. This is a way to activate the central channel that runs along the length, lengthwise along our torso, all the way around our torso. So if you want, you can close your eyes. You can rest the tip of your tongue just against the roof of your mouth behind your T. And that will connect the yin and yang channels as well. So we'll breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth and just elongating our breath and kind of slowing it down. Starting to go inside, letting everything relax. This little bit of pressure into this point here is just a way to help calm and still the body and mind. It's a, it's a Taoist little Taoist trick. And with the breath, helping to circulate that energy around our body. Letting the belly relax. Having our hands together like this connects the circuitry of the body as well. The electrical circuitry. Some long, slow, kind of deep breaths. And you can go ahead and release your hands and you want, you can open your eyes and just let's massage our scalp for a little moment here to wake up all those channels that run through our scalp, almost those meridians that run across. Always get tingles when I do this. And then taking our hands to our ears, we can just give our ears a little massage, kind of bringing our vagus nerve online, right? So just a little rub and pull and squeeze. And then putting our fingers in our ears and gently pull down and hold and breathe. might feel a little calming when you do that. All right, and then releasing our arms out from our sides, let's move our spine a little bit by reaching our arms forward and then bringing them behind us, lifting our heart and reaching forward, feeling our spine arching and rounding a little bit as we Lift, we pull our arms back and breathe and reach forward, <clears throat> heart towards spine. And then go ahead and let your arms come alongside you and relax. And we'll come into a butterfly. So bring the feet together kind of away from you a bit, long-legged butterfly. If you like to have a pillow under your legs to help relax your legs and hips, that's an option. And we'll just come forward here and 
again, letting the legs and the hips relax totally. Start to relax forward. Feeling that stretch in our sacrum, such a good stretch for the sacrum. If you want, you can massage your feet, and just kind of give your feet a little bit of attention. And we always could use it. Our feet don't get, generally, generally don't get very much attention and they just kind of get taken for granted. Carry us around all day. <laughs> Just letting ourselves relax forward. And if you're able to round your spine, if that feels comfortable for you, that is always a nice way to stretch our spine as well. And this particular pose, butterfly, which is, I think, I feel like one of the most doable poses in yin for just about anybody, um, is something that you, we can always come back to if we feel like our body needs to do this instead of another pose that we happen to be doing. You know, this is a nice, just general alternative pose to do. Just... All right, and let's come, come on up from there. Let's start to just let our hips get a little opening. And then we'll bring our knees up, little wiggle side to side. Let them just, hips are relaxing here, kind of getting our hips opening up. We're gonna come into a straddle however wide that is for you to begin with. And you might <clears throat> like to have a cushion or a pillow to help support you. You can turn over towards your left leg and we'll start to relax forward over that leg. Well, Forcing it, just letting gravity start to help us let go into this stretch. Feel your sits bones rooted. So it's the it's gravity and our breath that are that are our friends in the end. And time. We have three friends. <laughs> Gravity, yet time, and breath. And you might notice that <clears throat> stretch that's happening through our right hip, right side body. Especially if you kind of reach your right hand a little bit more towards your foot. Always totally fine to bring a pillow underneath your chest on top of your leg if you like a little support there. Sometimes that's nice to help Help us let go to the stretch. <clears throat> and this width of our straddle might 
need to or feel like we want to adjust as we go along as well, whether that is bringing the legs closer together or farther apart. So noticing how our breath is maybe getting a little bit slower and a little bit deeper as we kind of let go to the pose. So if you feel like you want to count your breath and give it a little bit of attention, you can always do that by Usually four counts on the inhale is good and six or eight counts on the exhale. <clears throat> Always an option to help us get more into the breath and maybe help control the breath a little bit. Just a chance to work on that. That feels like something you want to do. So the dragonfly pose, which is what we're doing, the straddles or dragonfly pose is particularly good for the channels, the bladder channel, the liver channel, the kidney, and the spleen. Kind of the main channels that get the stretch. Okay, so we'll just walk ourselves up the leg and come all the way up to sitting. Take your time, come out of it slowly. If you are using a pillow or something for support, you can bring it over to the right leg. Also, we come forward, rooting our sits bones here, or to let go on the right side. Of course, if we are rounding our back and kind of letting the head hang, if that's comfortable, or at least for the amount of time that it's comfortable, that also gives us our spine a nice chance to stretch and the vertebra to decompress. Really. But almost the only way we can do that is by you know, rounding forward over our legs. <laughs> really almost the only way to stretch the spine. And then we'll feel this really good stretch to that left hip, sort of around the outer, the lateral part of the hip and the back a little bit and through our side body, especially if we're reaching our left 
arm a little bit more towards the foot. That increases that stretch. Of course, any time that we are in a forward fold type of stretch, we will be <clears throat> naturally relaxing our body. We'll start to really relax. It's a good stress release to forward fold. <laughs> So we'll slowly walk ourselves back up to sitting. Take your time. You want to come out of the stretches slowly because it takes a while <laughs> to come back, bounce back to where we started. And then we'll come to this, the center. You might want to pillow or a bolster there. Feel free to move your legs or wiggle them or shake them too if you need to. And then we'll just come forward. Just relax and maybe your arms, elbows on a pillow to start with or on the ground. Quite an intense hip opener. So <clears throat> best to kind of move into it slowly. And into our body. So you might find that you can widen your straddle a little bit, or maybe you need to bring your legs closer together if you're feeling tension on the inside of the knees or on the sacrum, too much, too much tension. So we are very, very close to the exact time, actually, of um, the full moon today. <laughs> today is the, the full moon. Um, and it's 
in the sign of Leo also called the snow moon the snow moon is that full moon in winter that is um, associated you can just picture a blanket of snow <laughs> there's a blanket of snow outside and all is calm and still so it's the time of year devoted to stillness and quiet and going inside snow moon the sign of leo that this full moon happens to be in is about the creative potential within. We find that stillness and going within to find our, our creative potential or that creativity that wants to come out, the inner, the inner self or that inner child that wants to shine. Just a real, probably a very sort of um, fun feeling under the, the rays of the sun, the Leo moon is about the heart and about joy, the joy that's it's centered in our heart. really wants to come out under the Leo moon, its fullness. This moon happens to be being activated by the planet Uranus. The planet Uranus is the liberator. So we might find a real feeling of wanting to be liberated and letting some kind of creative urge come out. Uranus is going to sort of wake up that creative urge within. It can be very, very liberating and unpredictable. <laughs> Maybe something that you didn't know wanted to come out is suddenly going to show itself. Okay, so let's slowly start to come up. So using the hands and the arms to come up and we'll bring our legs together. So lean back. <laughs> We've been in that open straddle for a while. Bring the hands behind us. And let's kind of windshield wiper the legs a bit. Ah, oh, and then bringing the feet under, maybe lifting and lowering the hips a few times if that feels good to you. Might really feel the insides of the legs that stretch in the inner legs. Right, and then we'll come back around to sitting. And if you're able to come into shoelace, cross your right leg over the left, that, and if you're not, you can sit cross-legged to start with for a moment. Just let the hips, after opening the hips, we're gonna close them. <laughs> so stacking that right knee over the left if possible. And then let's take a little twist by pressing into this right leg with our left hand and then lengthening our spine. Or you can bring your arm toward out, you know, on top of your leg like that if you'd like. Just kind of gently spiral back into a twist. Just taking a couple breaths here.
and then we'll come back around to face forward. And if you are able to be in shoelace, you can just let your body sort of relax forward over your legs. Otherwise, you can come onto your back and do a supine version by hugging the legs into your chest. Or another option would be like a figure four with your leg crossed over, which in yin is called seated swan, right? So that's another option if that feels good to you, or you can also do this on your back. So various options for this hip stretch. Shoelace doesn't work for you. And just letting your body let you know which one will <laughs> work best today. These deep hip stretches are so good for the IT band and the sacroiliac area. So it keeps our sacrum and that, that whole sacrum, that channel, I guess, the sacroiliac channel um, that runs along the leg, sciatic channel, keeps that healthy. well as the compression that we get in our, knee, our knees if we are in shoelace to help nourish that joint and deeper layers of fascia in the neck, tendons, and ligaments. So at this Leo full moon time, the next few days to follow, you might just sort of notice we do have these creative urges that um, might kind of stir in us, especially since we're at that in-between time of right in the middle between the winter solstice and the spring equinox, that life energy is starting to stir. So this, this full moon is sort of complements that whole <clears throat> sort of beginning of spring and finding that creativity that wants to come out this year. Saw a good example of that last night when a friend of mine that I was at um, a ritual, we were doing a ritual for the in bulk time, and she suddenly was finding herself creating songs. It's like her inner songwriter was coming out and she was singing them, and they were really beautiful. It's like, oh, well. This is something that's been sort of a latent talent that wanted to come out, some creative urge that um, just wanted expression. It's a perfect example <laughs> of this Leo full moon with Uranus involved, <laughs> kind of liberating her songwriter that was buried inside of her.
Okay, so if you are sitting and shoelace, you might just slowly bring yourself up to sitting. If you are on your back, take your time coming out and coming back up. So just slowly come out from that side, maybe give the legs a little shake and um, wiggle around. And especially if you need to get the blood flowing <laughs> in there. <laughs> and then we'll cross <clears throat> the left leg over the right. I'm not able to hold my right leg, so I'm doing half shoelace and to begin with, which is also an option, or you can sit cross-legged and with your other leg on top. So let's start with a twist by bringing our right arm to our left leg, lengthening our spine and just spiraling back, taking a couple breaths here. And then we'll come back around to face forward. And if you are in shoelace, you can just fold forward over your legs or you can come onto your back in the supine version, pulling your legs in. Oops, a little under my head here, like that, or the seated swan, right? Or yeah, that figure four, you can also choose that one that is preferable. Any, any pose really that will reach that hip, lateral hip area. So we're getting into that left hip here, primarily. Explore if you want as well to find what feels best today. You see the difference between the shoelace. Pose and the swan pose, which is the figure four, would be that sh the shoelace pose is really going to compress the stomach and the spleen and the digestive organs in there. So that's the primary difference. They're both really great hip stretches.
Okay, so we'll start to slowly come out and take your time coming out from there. You're on your back. Come up slowly, sitting. Give the legs a little shake or whatever feels good to you. And <clears throat> bouncing around or moving around. And we're going to come into Sphinx next and seal. So coming around to our belly. And starting with our arms alongside our body, reaching back for our feet. It's coming into a it's called infant in yin and salabhasana or locust in yoga. So lifting up and reaching for the feet, tightening up our backside, all those muscles in the back. And then bringing our elbows underneath the shoulders to come in. Letting the pelvis relax, maybe rocking around a little bit. Good. Elbows might be a little wider apart or a little farther forward if you need to. Feeling our spine bending in that other direction. might like to lift our head and look up and kind of get a stretch in the front of the neck area, a little bit of compression in the neck, in the back of the neck, that feels good to you, or you might move your head around or rest your chin on your hands. Very nourishing for our kidneys and our kidney meridian. The winter, which we're still in winter technically, right? And the winter is the time for, in Chinese medicine, is the time for the kidney and the urinary bladder. So good time to nourish the kidneys and the kidney meridian. If you want, you can also lift your feet and increase that compression in the lumbar and the stretch in the front of the leg and the front body. Of course, that alternating between the stretching of our sacrum and our forward fold kind of poses, and then the compression on the sacrum in these back bend types of poses, so going back and forth and putting that pressure on the, on the sacrum that is so beneficial and will help keep our sacroiliac joint healthy for years to come. <laughs> Keep our sacrum healthy and vibrant. So important. Especially as we get along in years. <laughs> That's the joint that tends to become the most fixated with with age, the sacrum.
Okay, so we'll just take a short little break in half frog by sliding our leg up toward our shoulder, maybe turning to the left, resting the head on the hands. And just letting that hip go, just let it relax. All right, and then slide your leg back down. We're ready to come back into Sphinx again. And you can bring a folded up blanket under your arms to increase the back bend if you like, or just lift your legs, or you can come into seal. So we can straighten our arms and kind of widen our arms apart a bit. And the seal, and put pillow underneath your pelvis to bolster and support you and seal as well. Good option for doing seal a little bit too much, but you want to get that increased back bend. Of course, if we bring our hands closer to us, we increase more. We bring our hands farther out. A little bit less compression. Just going in and out of any of these variations for the next couple of minutes, that feels right. And checking in with the breath as well, so that if, if the breath does start to get a little bit labored or choppy, right, we um, want to back out of the pose a little bit and um, just our body's way of telling us it's a little bit too much. <laughs> Paying attention to the breath. Sphinx and seal pose are quite engaging for the arms and shoulders as well. So really keep our shoulders in good health by, you know, hanging out in Sphinx <laughs> and or seal for a little bit every day is a good thing to do, as well as kind of activating those upper body meridians that run through our arms and shoulders. Well, if you are up in seal, you might want to start to make your way back down to Sphinx, slowly coming back out from the intense back bend. And we can take a short break and 
frog on the right side. Slide the right knee up, look to the right, relaxing our hip. You can always bring your arm alongside you if that's helpful for the shoulder. These nice little short breaks in half frog that allow our body to come back into balance. It just gives it a little bit of um, time to kind of balance out from the back bend and the forward folding. And slide your leg back down. We're going to make our way on, onto our all fours. That's not something you can do. You might find a different position to just let your spine move a little bit by going around our back, curling our tailbone under, and just slowly rounding and then coming into an arch, moving gently slowly back and forth. Bring our spine back into balance here. And remembering that our our head is actually a part of our spine, right? It's the, <laughs> the other end from our tail. It goes all the way up to the, the top of the head. And then coming to neutral, we'll just circle our hips around a bit. And just kind of let your body move however it wants to. Let it move around and breathe. the other direction. And then we'll sit back into a child's pose for a moment. So you might like have your legs together or you might like them apart. If you have to be on your back, you can just hug your knees in and maybe come into a little happy baby type of pose or something that feels good to you there. A little compression and stretch in our hips and our knees. And a little stretch in the sacrum. Okay, and then we'll come up from there and come around onto our back. And you might already be on your back. <laughs> and just hug your knees into your chest, maybe help your body rock around a little bit. And here you might like to have a, a strap handy. 
I forgot to mention the scratch for this, or you might just use your hands. But what we'll do is put our left foot on the mat and holding onto our right leg. We're just going to curl up to that knee, the head to knee, and then bring that foot up. If you want to use a strap, you can wrap it around your foot, or you can use your hand and just come into a half happy baby. Pose. Both hands on the feet too works. We'll slide our left leg down. Just kind of pull that knee, that right knee down toward our armpit, toward the mat as we stretch our left leg long. You might hold on to your foot with a strap or one hand or both hands. Doing that really nice stretch. If we're pulling our knee down, we're really getting that stretch on the underside of our right leg into the groin and of course in the hip flexors on the left leg and so as. And you might even want to open that left knee and bend your leg to slide your foot up towards your hip. If you want to explore that way to get a nice stretch in the top of that left thigh. And then we're going to take hold of this right leg on the outside of the knee and take our leg over to the side, maybe adjust your hips to come into a twist. You might like to have some bolstering over there for your leg. <laughs> and with our right shoulder on the ground, right arm extended out, a little bit up, a little bit bent. Right, supporting the right leg. Twist. And that left leg might be straight on the mat if you like, or you might have that knee bent with your foot up towards your hip. Just letting our our breath, massage all of our internal organs. Massaging the spleen and the stomach and the pancreas, especially. Okay, so go ahead and bring your right hand around, grabbing our right knee, and we'll slowly bring it into our chest. And bring your left knee up and center your body. If you want, you can 
take the bolstering over to the other side. We'll put our right foot on the ground, hold on to our left leg, curl up. And again, if you want to put a strap around your foot or your hands, one or both hands around your foot, coming into that half happy baby, sliding our right leg down on the mat. Pull our knee toward the ground to help get that stretch in our inner thigh, back of our thigh and to the groin as well as our hip flexors. If you like, you can also open the right knee out and slide your right foot in towards your hip, or you can leave it straight on the mat, whatever feels good to you. It's a little different stretch, right? There are different variations on that stretch. And then we'll bring our right hand around to out grab hold of that leg. Maybe shift your hips a little bit, guiding our knee across the body. So having a bolster in there if you need it for support. Left arm extending out from our shoulder, a little all the way on the ground, a little bit bent little bit up there so we feel that stretch across the front of our shoulder, chest. And take a little bit of time and twist on this side, just letting your breath be full and even. And by this time, it's probably pretty slowed down and deepened. <laughs> Our knee is up higher. We got it lifted higher. Of course, we get the twist more in the upper part of our spine. And if our knee is lower down, we feel the twist more in the lower part of the spine. So it's a matter of preference. Of course, twists are, especially the laying down supine version of a twist is so good for um, recalibrating our nervous system, bringing it back into balance and bringing our spine back into balance as well, as well as relaxing the body.
<clears throat> might slowly start to come out, or if you like, you can linger a little longer in that twist. Stay there for a bit longer if your body wants to. Otherwise, we can start to bring ourselves onto our back in a comfortable position so we can take a moment to integrate. So whether you like your knees to be bent or you want your legs to be straight, you want to bolster, if you want to hug your knees, anything that feels good to you. And then coming into a resting pose to integrate and feel our bodies. I won't bring my drum into this now that I know that you can't hear it. <laughs> but just letting your body relax and noticing how you feel. Noticing your breath. And feeling the energy circulating throughout your body. Feeling the connection. Being grateful for our body, being grateful for our breath and giving thanks to the earth, to Gaia for the greater body for supporting us, supporting us in our life. Our life journey. And just taking your time to get up if you want to. Otherwise, feel free to lie there and relax longer. And I'll signal a little ending signal. And thank you all for coming. Thank you, Deb. <laughs>